Good morning. You're listening to Government Geek with Heather Bevan, and we have been talking about economic stability, jobs, jobs, jobs for the last few weeks, um, and we are going to continue right on that path. You will remember that this is a show about how the government uses your money. You pay about $26,000 a year in taxes out of your household, and for all of us, that's real money. Um, and so we want to find out where it's going and how the government, city, state, federal, county, all of it, how it's using it and to you to benefit your communities. We have in studio with us Kai Ekinji. He's the co-founder of Office Divi, um, and he and I have had many spirited conversations on small business development and entrepreneurship, sole proprietorship, um, and even the sharing economy. So we're going to talk about all of that today with Kai Ekinji. Oh, I'm getting so close. I'm going to have it down before the end of the show. (laughs) Um, And so you tell, let's start off with Office Divi. It's really a brilliant idea. And it's um, the brainchild of you and Lisa, your wife. That's correct. And we have another partner, actually, Sim. So it was all three of us that we came up with the idea some years back. And t- and so you were just sitting around the table because you were all entrepreneurs. So you were just sitting around the table and you said, man, if we just had a little bit of infrastructure, that'd be great. Actually, we were not really entrepreneurs at the time. We were um, either slaves to corporate America or consultants uh, in that kind of world. And all three of us were um, working from home, traveling to clients, client sites, doing work on site with the clients. Sim came from uh, technology. He was with a large company, the original inventor of enterprise shopping carts at that time. <laughs> and Lisa was um, in, uh, well, Fortune 500 companies uh, doing consulting as a uh, project manager and producer. And I was in the travel industry, travel management and travel technology. So the, the common thread was that we were working from home or traveling and we said, wouldn't it be cool to create a destination for people like us? There's going to be a ton of uh, folks like us around here in Palm Coast and Flagler County. And it would be great to have that third place between home office or a home office that people can come to, do their solo work or collaborate, bounce ideas off of each other, change their environment a little bit, especially to either get away from the isolation that may come with working from home or distractions, distractions such as, you know, the refrigerator, the TV, the kids, the pets, you know, you name it. Well, and we, I have an office, but I work from home most of the time. Mm-hmm. And it's difficult. You're, first off, you're never off when you do that. Right. Um, if you don't set your own boundaries. And, and then, of course, you have your dining room table stacked full of files and sticky notes and whatever else. And so that's not very welcoming at home. So it's a great middle ground for. It is. It is. And it's more, a, more than space. It's a vibe and it's a community element that we were after. And I think um, those proven to be very beneficial to folks who are either freelancer types, who are um, telecommuting types, or who are startup entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And so from my time um, on the campaign trail, Mm -hmm. I had a really heavy sense that Flagler, unlike even Volusia, St. John's, Putnam, which were all part of the district, um, Flagler is home to these amazing people who have amazing careers out in the world. Uh, Lisa, for example, a very well-known producer in New York. Um, There's we have authors here. We have international speakers, keynote speakers here. Uh, we have consultants, all kinds of people here, and they, they go out into the world and they have these big, huge lives professionally, and then they come back here and they have these quiet little, you know, they, they have their circle of friends and nobody even knows um, that they're here. It's kind of like their little uh, sanctuary. So to me, Flagler County is ripe to capitalize on that as far as attracting more people like that. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, you're, you're brave and powerful and in a stressful career in the world. And then you come home to Flagler and it's just home. Right. Totally. Totally. And that's, that's part of what you have going on with office TV. I mean, think about it. That's why we moved here in the first place. You know, we were all uh, from a Metro New York area, Sim, Lisa and I, a Metro New York and metropolitan area overall. And we got attracted to the change of pace, to the quality of living cost of living, how much farther your money can go in this area. And in today's world, it really doesn't matter so much where you are if you're in those particular genres of, of um, 
employment or business, right? So if you are someone who is working from a computer or who is working, you know, utilizing phones and a computer and teleconferences and webinars and ty- types of things, then it doesn't matter where, whether you're sitting in midtown Manhattan or in the financial district in Boston or, or, or really in Hammock Beach or Flagler Beach or Palm Coast. Doesn't matter. Right. Right. It's all the boundaries have been erased right. with technology. Right. So you guys then started Entrepreneur Night mm-hmm. and that is part of the vibe you're talking about. It's a way to, for entrepreneurs to come together and network and learn from each other and do business with each other. Yes. Cause that's the hard, is that the hardest part about being an entrepreneur? Cause you don't have the big heavy marketing budget. Um, that, you know, maybe your counterparts have. So you have to do a lot of these networkings and get getting together. Right. I think the hardest part is really your year two, year three, year four in entrepreneurship. Year, you know, when you first start up, your first year is all about excitement, plans, future, I can do it attitude, and all running on testosterone, you really don't even need money and, and things of that nature. Like you're figuring things out, doing guerrilla marketing and, and things of that nature. Uh, but when it comes to year two, year three, year four, year four then you got to kind of crack the knot on things, you know, understand that that initial momentum of excitement can only take you so far. Real business has to happen at one point. And the, um, the types of events like Entrepreneur Night or um, – chambers after hours and, and, and gatherings where uh, folks of all types of paths and careers come together and have a little chat, you know, over uh, a drink and appetizer can be an amazing benefit. But I think how you approach that also can benefit you a lot. So Entrepreneur Night was an idea. We, we were doing these types of events within the membership of, of Office TV. Uh, two, three times uh, a year where uh, people who did business with us could gather and, you know, meet their fellow uh, uh, like-minded, so to speak, in some ways, uh, uh, business uh, people and um, network and learn from each other, chit chat, uh, create referrals for each other and often really do business with each other. So we said, how can we carry this kind of vibe to the, to the overall community um, staying true to like an open and transparent entrepreneurial culture. Uh, and we spoke with a couple of folks um, that we knew uh, had common goals. Uh, and we did one event. We said, let's do one event that's open to everybody. Let's call it Entrepreneur Night uh, and, and see what happens. So this was back in 2011 now. It's been a while. And we did just that uh, kind of got the word out a little bit word of mouth and a little bit of um, you know digital marketing and things of that nature targeted marketing and we um, had about maybe 25 people came together to that event a uh, dozen of which I've known personally because they were involved in that kind of movement and a dozen or so came from elsewhere that I met for the first time and and it was a tremendous um, Success in the sense that it accomplished all those things. Mm-hmm. The networking aspect of it, uh, the bouncing ideas off of each other aspect of it, uh, socializing aspect of it, um, referring business to back and forth aspect of it, and also doing business with each other aspect of it. And now 100, 200 people show up every month. Yeah, on average 150 people show up. Yeah. So that that is good and that's bad, by the way. <laughs> when an event grows so big... Right. So those initial goals, you kind of give up on some of those. It's impossible to meet all 150 people that are at an event. But that mirrors that mirrors the life of an entrepreneur. Right. Because you as you move through year two, three, four, you start thinking, okay, now I've got to hire. And uh, I had a friend of mine whose company grew from 11 folks to 90 folks within a matter of a couple of years. And I remember her saying I had less stress and more money. Right. When there was 11 of us. Right. Then yeah. when there's 90 of it's us. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. So there's all, and you have to make those decisions. And this show, Government Geek, is about our actual taxpayer dollars. So mm-hmm. how does, give us, give us some idea of what you've seen locally here in, in, uh, Palm County, um, or even out in the world, because I know you spend a lot of time thinking about, uh, 
fostering an entrepreneur environment. So tell us what you've seen. How how can cities and counties, local governments, even states come alongside people who are uh, visioning this path for themselves and uh, really foster an environment that that not only starts, but incubates those mm-hmm. little baby businesses. Right. So my personal opinion is that it's all about um, creating a culture that matters. Um, anything else, you know, uh, money pumped in uh, or uh, leadership roles taken by the governments, etc., they they are not um truly um um raising this type of culture but creating an atmosphere that is only driven when you take those actions whether um you know create momentum or 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 pump in money so for for an entrepreneurial a startup culture truly occur it has to start with the culture we have to i think um focus on the cultural part of of things um so i am not big on um government thinking that they can truly create an entrepreneurial uh, uh environment in any given landscape right so let's go back to like a like a big city environment right and the the most celebrated types of of companies um in the world today are like doing business on the web uh digitally apps and things of that nature, right? So when um, a Facebook gets started, if you look at the original structuring, you know, peer-to-peer, uh, student-to-student getting together, creating their co-founders, and then connecting with folks outside, etc., there is very little influence of government in that kind of growth, right? In the starting up of things, as well as in the growing part of things. It's like completely a private enterprise-driven process where uh, folks get together, uh, they make a decision to create something, and, you know, they either t- take, uh, they either start that business from where they are located or relocate to what they think would be better for their business, uh, in, in which case Facebook moved to, obviously, Silicon Valley, right? And um, so these, in these types of process, none of those guys are thinking, how can the government can help? You know, how can the government help me? What, what, what can I do to talk to the city of, um, Boston or city of, you know, San Francisco or city of, of New York City to grow my business? I see those types of things are more beneficial for when you are either starting up or relocating a, what we call like a traditional type of business, right? The business that requires, uh, true infrastructure, uh, whether it's space or, 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 or shelves or warehousing and things of that nature. Um, so I'm not big on, on government, uh, taking a leadership role in terms of creating entrepreneurship, but more of a supporting and nurturing role, um, hand in hand with private enterprise and investors and things of that nature. Okay. You're listening to Government Geek and I have Kai from Office <laughs> Divi. Come back. Welcome back. You're listening to Government Geek with Heather Bevan, and I have Kai Ekenji um, with Office Divi and Entrepreneur Night. Um, we're talking about all of the ways that the government can um, foster a sense of economic uh, entrepreneurship and economic stability in communities for small businesses, sole proprietors, and startups. And Kai, you just said that the government can't really um, spirit lead lead. Um, the entrepreneurship process. And you know, I disagree with that. Um, and you, you, when you came in earlier, you said, do you take positions on the show? And I said, I do not, but, but let me just counterpoint you. Go ahead. So the city, you know, we, the city can do things, um, that either help or hinder either foster or, or, or hurt, uh, the spirit of entrepreneurship things like, um, in their policies. So for example, Palm coast, you can't park your, van if it has a logo in your driveway um we there was a big thing uh, maybe a year or so ago about in-home bakeries for example and until recently palm coast had a pretty strict anti-home based business uh, atmosphere right um so those things do and in entrepreneurs move 
they leave communities or they uh, follow, they are, or they are attracted to communities based on those kinds of policies. It may may it, or ordinances. It may not be even that um, the government is throwing money at something or that they're, uh, you know, saying, hey, come here and start your own business. But they can be doing things um, in their ordinances that really hurt an entrepreneurship, an entrepreneur's ability to start mm-hmm. and grow. And we agree on that. Heather, we agree on that in the sense that um, I was I was really speaking to the use of tax money um, for um, creating business. Mm-hmm. OK, because I, I take an objection to that because I cannot control how that's being done, where the influences are, what's the real benefit is, what's the real agenda is and whether or not these folks I trust as as business people to make sound decisions. Right. But when it comes to supporting uh, the whole culture, I think those are the types of things that we're talking about. <clears throat> Pardon me. That government can be of tremendous value, right? Nurturing, supporting, and and taking a position, uh, particularly being business friendly, without being foolish. Though you know, we don't have to lay the red carpet to business unconditionally. I, obviously, there are other things to watch for. Um, but but those ways, I totally agree with you. Those are those are the types of things where government policies, opinion, and approach will matter into an overall culture, which I think is what we should focus on, was my point. So give me one or two ways that um, Flagler County slash Palm Coast mm. um, or Beverly Beach and Flagler Beach, all of our local municipalities, give me a couple of ways that they're doing it right. I mean, I, I can give you um, an example on which I'm a party. Um, in the case of how they approached Entrepreneur Night uh, was very interesting. Uh, it was really a supporting role, uh, starting with the city of Palm Coast from get-go, uh, recognizing the um, the event as something special, a movement, so to speak, to, towards creating this type of culture that we're talking about. And um, Joe Roy, the manager of Palm Coast Business Assistance Center at that time, he was actually in the first gathering. And he said, oh, this is this is great, and I can see this going great places. And he really took a supporting role um, and uh, and later actually made financial support even available uh, through that department, uh, which was greatly appreciated because that, that, that event has expenses, and we were solely shouldering those at right. that time. And um, then uh, the, the current manager, uh, Ray Peters, is continuing that entire support uh, system uh, when it comes to Entrepreneur Night events. Um, the Flagler County Economic Development got involved as a sponsor last year. Uh, they recognized it as an interesting grassroots event uh, and a movement for entrepreneurship and benefiting our area tremendously, even though the focus of this event is Tri-County area, Volusia, Flagler, St. John's. But the, the Flagler is in the center, so they, they understood and acknowledged that, and they are supporting the event. Um, so those ways government have been helpful without – Mandating, right. um, you know, a particular vision, totally understanding this is grassroots for and by entrepreneurs and, and letting, letting it be just that. Uh, and by, by our very nature, entrepreneurs don't really like being told what to do anyway. <laughs> they, they typically don't, right? They, they want ownership of what's, what's happening. And, and that's, I'm proud in this event where, uh, the participants actually really create the destiny and the culture of the event. It is truly grassroots. But what's interesting is that I think of our area, in terms of thinking, a little traditional. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so this event is not a traditional event, right? It's not an event that's started by a chamber or by a government organization, etc. And um, so I appreciate that thinking that where otherwise we are in a community that's traditionally wired to think about business, um, that they understood grassroots is a little different, and they let that be. You know, they participate in uh, giving feedback, but not so much changing direction. And and I appreciate it. And what do you hear from your members um, in the way that Palm Coast, Flagler Beach, Beverly Beach, Mm -hmm. Marineland, Bunnell, Flagler County? Did I get them all? Yes. I think I I got them all. Um, In the ways that they could do it better. Like, for example, there were, I don't know, three, four, five years ago now, there was significant talks about, um, you know, Wi-Fiing the whole community. Have, yeah. You know, a satellite. I think that is a huge step towards um, welcoming 
entrepreneurs and small businesses growing sole proprietors. Um, I, you know, those conversations uh, were kind of when the economy was booming and then they all vanished. The, I think that conversation pretty much vanished when the economy hit the skids. But that, that to me is one way that we could really announce that Palm Coast is open for business. Um, redundant power, things like that. So what are you, what are you hearing from your members that what, what are the thorns in their side? I mean, the, the, um, this I'm going to have to disagree with you on the Wi-Fi of the whole community. <laughs> And I will, I will do so because it's a, it's a passe kind of, um, thought. Uh, a lot of cities that started that movement also did away with that because of the infrastructure cost. The idea though, the root idea that you have, which is increasing in technology that could be an attraction to court either startups to start and stay here or to move from elsewhere. I think that has a lot of merit. Um, the, so one example of that was that the idea of Palm Coast FiberNet, right? Cities own infrastructure, fiber optics infrastructure, um, back in 2006 or 2007 was opened up to the businesses. And that had a lot of wisdom because at lower costs, you were accomplishing like tremendous um, bandwidth. At our offices, we were having 100 megabits upload, 100 megabits download. So 100 megabit upload is really unheard of, right, in a suburban style community. Uh, and, and we, we did have those. The, it kind of ran into a couple of hiccups, but I think they're refiguring that out. And I think they're even inviting in kind of national players to provide that service on their infrastructure, which can be, um, launched in a, in a, in a uh, year or two, I think. So that'll be, I think, tremendously beneficial to really keep Technology companies starting up here in in this community. Um, so the the what what I'm hearing from folks is that, and I, I think one more thing I got to give one more plug to the CEO Pankos, which was I thought very visionary by the way when it can, when it can't come to uh, comes to entrepreneurship, which is the city four or five years ago issued a pledge to entrepreneurs, and that is the only city in the United States that did that, saying that, you know, we support entrepreneurship, uh, uh, we love entrepreneurs in this community, and and really listed six or seven points where uh, they discussed, I think maybe we should do another show on that. Uh, that pledge is available at the city, and I think a copy of that is also entrepreneurnight.com. Um, the, in terms of like overall member, uh, office TV member attitude to the, to the city, um, it's like the, the overall sentiment about government. It's really ref almost like a mirror image of that. I think uh, some people are um, liking the, what the city is doing for different reasons, uh, and some business folks are, are are not so fond of the city for the the same old things that you know issuing a business license is hard, etc. I don't necessarily uh, agree with those things. Um, I think they are more superficial. You know, uh, this the, 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 it's more about this anti-government sentiment that we are hearing anywhere else than, than uh, fact-based, I think. But you're right. When it came to, like, the home-baked, uh, um, what, what do they call that industry? It's, um, there's a particular name for it, but I can't recall it right now. But this home-based bakery industry, um, and when it came to parking, you know, the, uh, the branded uh, uh, vehicles in, in one's driveway, you know, it can go either way. There is hygiene and there is not. I think the pros and cons... Um, have to be kind of laid out and, and, and maybe, maybe the city can open that feedback to the community and see what folks are thinking about, um, and, and kind of reevaluate those things. So in those ways, are they business friendly? Um, not apparently, right? In appearances, but there, there, there probably are uh, other things to worry about, like when it comes to an industry like cottage, cottage into industry, they call it the home based, um, bakery. Industry. Oh, yeah. it, well, and, and, you know, there's, Every, you know, has an equal and opposite reaction. So when Cocoa Beach did that, for example, they, there, there's a kitchen mm -hmm. in Cocoa Beach. It's very much like Office Divi. So if you're a, if you're a baker or, you know, caterer or whatever, and you can't do it from your kitchen anymore, you can, you know, rent space in a, so somebody, somebody took advantage of that. Um, some entrepreneur took advantage of that and started a collaborative kitchen. So I guess there's, you know, kind of goes back and forth. Um, I do think that, uh, things like that, um, logos on vans, um, 
home baked home bakeries, all that stuff. I think I think the problem with it is is it sends it's an easy message for people to get a hold of, and so they say, oh well, that's not business friendly. Um, it's much easier to understand uh, those kinds of simple ordinances and understand um, than understand the environment being fostered. So very much like we've talked with the sharing economy, um, you know, having uh, vacation rentals and ordinances that prohibit that, which really are akin to home-based businesses as well. And I think they're, it's very easy to understand when you announce no logos on vans, no vacation rentals, no home bake bakeries. It's very easy for people to go, see, government's trying to tell me what to do with my property. And that is an easy concept to grab a hold of. So there is messaging that that is important when you're fostering an environment and governments don't always think very clearly about messaging. Right. 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 I think also though, I think we place a higher premium in this area uh, to what the government is thinking also. Like when you, um, when you even go into the private news outlets, you know, Palm Coast Observer or Daytona Beach News Journal or the uh, online equivalent of uh, Flagler Live, I think Flagler Live is a little different, but you see a lot of like press release pickups and the you know the government positions reflected in those papers and things of that nature too. So, you know, it's all about organizing, right? I mean, you 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 are a perfect example of that. You know, if you don't like um, what what the government is doing that's affecting a particular group, a community, or business interest, you organize and you kind of have a clear and um, louder voice in some ways. And I think. Those guys uh, with the vans, branded vans and cars, I think they tried to do that a little bit. I, I don't know how it ended. I don't think they could totally organize. But there were signs of some some kind of grassroots uh, getting together of independent business owners who were affected by that de- decision. And that was good to see. Whether I like that or not doesn't matter, right? It was good to see. You want those types of things in a community. So all in all, to foster, uh, we're in our last minute here. Mm-hmm. So... All in all, to foster entrepreneurship, um, we need to get the word out to the world that that uh, Flagler County, Palm Coast, Marineland, Beverly Beach, Flagler Beach, and Benel uh, are a great place for entrepreneurs to live and work. Yes, yes, we need to do that. Uh, but may I add a couple more things? Yes. We need to also focus on our youth, which which is also your sweet spot, right? Uh, particularly really in um, high school, um, junior and senior levels, as well as early college. Uh, there are a lot of gems there. We have a lot of interns who are, I'm not going to say they're geniuses, but they are brilliant, brilliant kids. And uh, I think we got to invest in them. And I think we got to rethink the types of events we are offering in this community um, and tweak that towards the types of businesses we want to see started in this area or the types of businesses we want um, considering moving to this area. I'm talking about like grassroots things like hackathons and, you know, uh, uh, developing uh, uh, teaching code and things of that nature, which we are doing little by little. But I'd love to see that done in a, you know, in a uh, Rider, wider... Like writer's retreats, things like that. All yeah. types of things. Yeah. Like the, um, it, it, just because you mentioned uh, the Florida Endowment Foundation, which is our organization, and we work with kids, we have... a the research is really clear. 75% of our high school students in the United States want to be entrepreneurs. They want to own their own business. And yet we have no uh, real significant entrepreneurship training in high school. And even the best MBA programs in college don't really focus on entrepreneurship. So it's a big missing opportunity. And I'm glad you brought it up. And I reserve the right to have you come back and we talk just specifically about preparing yourself to be an entrepreneur and how we grow young people to be ready for entrepreneurship. I'd love to. Thank you. All right. Give my best to Lisa. I will. Thanks for listening to Government Geek with Heather Bevan. Uh, you have had Kai from Office Divi, Office Divi, OfficeDivi.com, entrepreneurnight.com. Thanks.